Hello, fictional. Welcome to the What If Issei. Today we are gonna see, What If Issei is Son of Sparta and Eva. Part 6. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Issei was sitting in his office as today the orc was hosting their club meeting in Issei's office, as it seems things were kind of tense. Issei saw it, and so did Ria's as it appeared the devils of the group were weary of the Nephilim, which was understandable, since Nephilim had the power to slay gods and all that. It was late as Ria's had to walk with Asia and Ika to perform contracts as last night the trio had to deal with a shy little girl who launched an arrow at her love interest. Issei had saw the whole thing and told Ria she would make an awesome mom one day if she can help a girl in her teens find the courage to ask a boy out. Issei of course failed to notice the blush on her face as he walked away, be it from a mental image or possible feelings Issei didn't really know. As Issei sat on his desk he soon saw the portal at the far end of the room open as from it, Rodin came in as he headed over to Issei. Hey Rodin what's up? Issei asked as he plopped his feet on the desk. Nah just business as usual which reminds me I got word from Irina she has new information on that sword, so she sent a certain messenger over to deliver you the details. Rodin said as Ria's looked. Who's Irina? Ria's asked as Cadis and Murayama grumbled as Issei smirked. She's my childhood friend and the first person who discovered my mixed origins and accepted me. Sure she's a devoted follower of God and all, but she saw that my parents loved each other enough to have me, and next thing I know I recruited her as the first member of my brood, my first sword master. Issei said as he looked to a magazine and began reading it. Wait if Issei Sen already has both of his swordmaster positions filled, then why isn't she here? Asia asked as Rodin smirked. Right now Arena is deep undercover in the Vatican, see a couple of years ago after Issei's mom Eva was off something of great importance was stolen from her grave, and Issei here knows the church has it. Rodin said as Akeno looked. How can you tell? Akeno asked before Issei growled and slammed the magazine to the desk. Because those bastards are trying to make cheap mass-produced knockoffs of it. Issei said as he had the displeasure of facing one such knockoff when he had to fight his way through exorcists who thought he was a devil through and through. Needless to say he wasn't very fond of the Vatican for trying to recreate the very blade that his mother had wielded. Issei had to get that sword back and return it to where it belonged in the hands of family members. The fact the Vatican had the balls to defile and tarnish his mother's final resting place for her sword left Issei very peeved at the mere thought of it. Kiba had a feeling he shared Issei's sentiments on the Vatican just not aware of what it was. Kiba knew Issei was a first-generation Nephilim, which means unless another devil angel couple pops out who had spawned a daughter, Issei will basically have to rely on Ria's and the brood to act as his eaves once they become powerful enough to gain their own broods. Well anyway Issei here will need to take the day off to receive the message, so I'll see you all later. Rodin said as he left back to the gates of hell as Issei smirked. Well then ladies and one soul guy in a sea of girls I'll catch you all later. Issei said as Ria's understood that. Oh and ladies of my brood try getting Asia a familiar and Ria's a new one, she's going to need a better familiar for her status as a Nephilim. Issei called as Murayama and Cadis nodded. Got it boss. Cadis called as they two groups left a cow academy as they had check out some club room things because the talk of the Vatican left their new hangout a bit ice cold. Once they were out Issei looked at the far corner of his office where an old space was still set up as it had a food and water bowl as well as a cushion for a specific old buddy of Issei who he had since his childhood. I wonder if Hades will cause some mischief for everyone again. Issei said as he remembered his father's gift for him from his childhood such innocent days, unaware of the danger he was in. Our Academy Old Classroom Building HQ1 of the Orc, the group arrived in the building as Ria's had to ask now more than ever. Okay I get Asia needed a familiar, but I didn't expect that I would need a new familiar, in fact I didn't even realize I could still summon my old one. Ria said as she remembered her familiar who she used to try and recruit Issei, which ended up with her stabbed in the chest. Well you're in the service of House Sparta and House Eva, so you need a better familiar to look the part. Cadis said as Rias was confused. See Eva and Paradiso before she went traitor was a very renowned and high up angel, as her house was also proof of that, she was even God's right hand woman above even that of Gabriel and many of his archangels. Sparta was Mundus's general, but you should know the infamy and the vast fortune Sparta has in Inferno, now tie those in together and we have a lot of appearances we need to make mainly for formalities. Murayama explained as Rias got it. Oh. Ria's said as Murayama nodded. Now show us your familiar Ria's. Cadiz said as Ria's nodded before every one of the Grimmery peerage presented their familiars. Ria's had a bat, Akeno had an imp, and Kaneko had a cat. Okay this is underwhelming. Murayama said as Cadiz walked over to Kaneko and smiled. Well do you guys want to see my familiars? Cadiz asked as Murayama was now smirking. Sure. Kaneko said as she petted her cat Shiro. Alright you asked for it. 
Kada said before she raised her hand to the wall before three portals opened as from the blue portal, a blue cat-like creature appeared as it let out a tiger sound before from the two red portals, a similar creatures appeared as one was red, while the other was just plain black with red eyes. This of course shocked everyone as Kada smirked. Ladies meet my familiars, the rage trio Little Miss Lazy in the middle is Koyumi. Kada said as she pointed to the black hell rage who was sleeping. The twins are Ruby and Sapphire. Caddis pointing to the blood rage and the ghost rage as they were trying to get one over the other as they knock things down like fighting cats. Now then rookies meet my familiar. Mireyama said as she raised her hand skyward to reveal a statue as this was very anticlimactic. At least it was until the statue began producing blood with the sun setting as from it, the statue turned into a bird comprised of blood as it perched upon Mireyama's waiting arm as it cleaned its wing. This beauty is Griffa she's actually quite tender once you get to know her. Mireyama said as Akeno attempted to approach but Griffa caught at her telling her to back off which Akeno did. I did say once you get to know her. Mireyama said as Kada smiled a bit. Now even though we're trying to rebuild the Nephilim faction familiars are still a major part in supernatural society and can be a big help. Kada said as Asia was unsure. But I have no clue where to get a familiar. Asia said as Kada smiled. Well that's the best part of this. Kada said before Ika popped out of the closet surprising everyone. Oh do tell. Aika said surprising everyone with her sudden appearance after they lost her somewhere in the school. Oh everyone called to as Issei's trickster has made her appearance. How did you? Ria's asked as Aika smiled before come out of the closet. By the way we got company on the way apparently Ms. Sitri has been hearing rumors of how Sparta's missing air making a return. Aika said as she came out. It was soon that there was a knock on the door as Ria's looked and smiled. I got it. Aika called as she opened the door and let the lady and her peerage in. Welcome to HQ Grimory the boss isn't in at the moment, but his second in command will be able to talk to you. Ika said as Sona entered the room. Well Rhea seems the rumors are true you found a son of Sparta. Sona said as Ika smiled and stood with Asia. Seems the rumors are true now that you identified him I can now figure out his smell, half of it is from Sparta. Sona said as Asia looked. Who are they? Asia asked as Ika looked. That Sona she's the student body president and with her is her vice president. Ika explained as Asia got it. So Rhea's where is the man of the hour, the infamous son of Sparta, I have a few choice words for him after the stunts he pulled since her enrolled here and since he stole many of my own contracts. Sona said as Rhea sighed. If you have any problems with him put it through me, I promised you an explanation and I shall provide it. Rhea said as Ika then spoke. Basically Issei is a Nephilim and a son of both Sparta and Eva, before he recruited me, Asia, and Rhea Senpai into his brood, turning us into Nephilim. Ika said as Rhea's face palmed herself as she was going to explain that. Wait have you actually gotten desperate enough to join another faction to get away from Riser? Sona asked losing her cool a bit as Rhea sighed. No simply put I had no choice I was dying to a misfired arrow of light and he saved my life, as of now to the Nephilim I am a queen called the Dark Slayer, which means as of now I'm a low-ranking Nephilim. Rhea sat as Sona rubbed her eyes. You do realize this will come back and bite us in the ass when the rest of Inferno both anti-Sparta and pro-Sparta factions will be in an uproar when this gets out right. Sona asked as they knew this could become a major problem. Plus if his mother is who I think it is then Issei may be even more powerful than the Moose and has connections in both Inferno and Paradiso. Sona said as she heard of Eva and the fact that Eva had been the leader of Paradiso's armies at one point made Sona afraid to cross Issei at any point due to being the son of two insanely powerful being at his boosted Longinus gear Sona knew Issei may very well be on par with Chaos God Isir. So what brings you over exactly Sona? Because if it's to kick me out of cow I can assure you I still have the right to be here, as I still have my evil pieces and my peerage ensuring I am still the king of my peerage. Rhea said as it was a joking matter there, but also hit a sense of defense that if Sona is here for that she will fight for her right to be here, be it in political field or the battlefield. Anyway I guess I should introduce you to the other Nephilim in the room, this is Asia Argentino Issei's Quicksilver. Rhea said gesturing to Asia. Hello there. Asia said as she smiled. This is Ika the school female student body's resident pervert, who seems to have a very rare sacred gear that can only be truly utilized by a Nephilim at least according to Rodin. Rhea said as Ika adjusted her glasses. You are about three inches. Ika said to the boy of Sona's group. Okay I like her. He said as no doubt Issei's friends would have hit it off with her if she was into other girls. These two are Cadis and Mureyama Issei's royal guard and swordmaster respectively. Rhea said as she gestured to the two who were with their familiars. Issei has one more swordmaster in his brood, but she's currently away on business deep undercover, so she's not here with us for now. Rhea said as if this arena was still searching for that stolen item, then no doubt it was of great sentimental meaning and a powerful weapon to Issei. 
the Frias had to take a gander as they must have buried this item with Eva, no doubt protected for a while, since Eva didn't have the same method as Sparta to seal the doors to Paradiso down in deep Europe. As Sona saw them she chuckled as she saw this small group. Seems that the rumors were true in some aspect to say is a pervert if he's only recruited girls to his brood. Sona said as Rias couldn't help but agree, but took great offense to that. Anyway you do realize that since Issei is a son of Sparta, he will have to take his father's fortune in Inferno, since he is currently the next of kin, after how Sparta was wiped out during the Great War, save for Sparta himself. Sona said as that shocked many considering how Sparta was a legendary house, due to the fact it spawned Inferno's greatest of warriors in one form or another. In fact the one who holds the title of house head is named Sparta, while his old name is discarded until death. Some even consider how Sparta to be among the first devil households in Inferno, and in turn one of the most powerful of houses in existence. Anyway we're planning on getting these three some familiars since Ika seems to have progress faster than Rias did as a trickster, as the girl was able to utilize some of her gifts to get requests done faster. Murayama said as Ika smiled. I had a great teacher in Neven. Ika said as the two really hit it off that Neven was actually providing Ika her house's full support in most endeavors. Yes I believe the plan was to go next week if I'm not mistaken. Rhea said as Ika was shocked. Oh is that so? Sona asked as this was a problem. That will be a problem for me since I was hoping to get a familiar for Saji here as well. Sona said as she did want to see what type of familiar a Nephilim can snag. Oh then how about a friendly competition, since Issei has important things to take care of I was left in charge of his brood being, as I'm the equivalent to a queen and have more experience in leading. Ria said as Sona squinted her eyes accusingly as that sounded like a challenge. I don't suppose you mean a rating game do you? Sona asked as Ria's chuckled. No of course not we'd never get approval for that, plus Issei is trying to keep his brood in the shadows for a bit longer, but since I'm from the Gremory household we can't really participate until we have to. Ria said as from that book she now knew was the Nephilim Codex the original Nephilim kept the balance between the Trinity and preserved peace and harmony. Okay then how about we settle this the old-fashioned way tomorrow with a good game of sports. Ria said as tomorrow was a school day, but it could be done after school. Scene break the next day, Issei was passing by the tennis court as he heard his classmates talking about the student council and the Queens of Cow Academy going up against each other as Issei chuckled. Man what a bunch of idiots. Issei said as Murayama and Kadis were behind him. So the plan is cool in case he shows up. Issei said as he wasn't referring to a target but his messenger. Epar little sports day may very well become a hunt day. Caddis chuckled as she knew this was a perfect team bonding exercise. Okay then we'll all see you all at the finish line then. Issei said as clearly he had something up his sleeve. Scene break tennis court, the students were cheering on both sides as both Rias and Akeno were in their tennis outfits, as with Sona and her VP. Remember Akeno we're in it to win it. Rias said as Akeno nodded. Nodded, no mercy. Akeno called as she was ready. Everyone ready, good. Ria said as she held the tennis ball. May the best devil, no may the best supernatural being win. Sona said as a bit of a taunt as Ria's wasn't exactly a full devil anymore. Ria's then began her serve as she hit the tennis ball, but when she did the ball vanished before it made it over the net as that confused everyone. What happened to the ball? Ria's asked as Asia saw this with Murayama on the referee seat. Did you serve it Ria's? Akeno asked as Ria's looked. Of course I did and I'm pretty sure I didn't overserve it either. Ria said as everyone was confused. Okay let's try this again. Kata said as she passed the tennis ball to Ria's as she then began her serve again. Once she served the ball a shadow of sorts flew to the ball and when it passed the ball was gone once more. Okay something isn't right. Kata said as she gave a ball to Sona. Sona you try serving this time. She said as Sona nodded and served the ball. When Sona served the ball the same thing happened as it was apparent someone or something was grabbing the ball. Akeno then performed some magic to make the spectators walk away so they can investigate as this wasn't normal at all. Once they were gone Kata summoned her pack of hell rages as they began to search around. Okay you three search and expose. Kata said as the three cats began to hunt for the one causing this. Soon they heard a chewing sound as they looked to the wood line from the fence as on the bench was a large dog chewing on the tennis balls like chew toys. As the first two balls were beyond salvation already as Ria's was shocked. I think we found our culprit. Ria said as she used her magic to jump over the fence and head to the dog which was not a dog as it had six eyes, large claws, and large fangs. Ria's had walked over it to scare it off, but how can a Nephilim exactly scare off a hellhound who was growling at him and taking a battle stance to protect its shoe toys? I step back it's a hellhound. Caddis called as she and Murayama stood defensively between the two. The hellhound growled before it jumped away as it then roared causing people to hear a beast as Caddis sighed at this. We can let that thing walk around freely. Ria said as she knew this hellhound needed to be caught and taken to a preserve or something, and that is if it's not feral. 
I have to agree with Ria's on this one, I suppose we should call off this little game for now. Sona said as Murayama smirked. Or we can change the game altogether and make it one huge game. Murayama said as Kat is followed up. Okay then first group to catch that hellhound will get to go to the familiar forest. Kat is said as everyone one could agree with that is thanks to Issei's brood Ria's get more members that even out the playing field for her. And that does sound quite interesting and that hellhound it's a purebred and has prior training by the way it carried itself, whoever it belongs to may pay a handsome reward for its safe return. Sona said as this could very well help them if the owner is high up in the supernatural world. Ria smirked as a purebred well-trained hellhound was up for grabs and now everyone was on the hunt for it. Okay then we all are in agreement we go after the hellhound and first group to catch it goes into the familiar forest. Ria said as that was in agreement. Okay then the game starts as soon as we change. Sona said Ria's agreed on that. Scene break one wardrobe change later. An echo was holding close to Caddis as they looked to the hellhound. All Caddis had to do was say hound and Kaneko was practically clinging to Caddis as the girl was holding onto her head. You smell our stray Kaneko. Caddis asked as Kaneko glared. I hate dogs and you shouldn't have made me join on this. Kaneko said as Kata sighed. Remember it's for Rias, Asia, and Ika. Kata said as Kaneko sighed. Towards the part. Kaneko said as Kata nodded and headed towards the part. Once the duo arrived Kata saw the hellhound digging a hole, as that was something a normal dog would do, except the hold was the size of a large pit and seemed to be done. The hellhound jumped out of the hole and grabbed what looked like a very large bone, as the thing looked like it belonged to a dinosaur or very large stray, as the dog buried it with what looked like many more large bones from strays. Once it was placed properly with the others in the pile the dog began burying said bones once more as to Kaneko's shock, no one seemed to have noticed. Okay then on the count of three we jump it, one two three. Caddis called as they two charged at the hellhound, who smelled them a mile away and jumped over them, causing the two to land inside the put before said hellhound added the rest of the dirt, as once the dust cleared the two were now faces in the ground. I blame you. Kaneko said as she was in a similar situation. This better not be some hentai in the making. Caddis said as she had her fair share of shit like that to deal with, with Ika and Asia, Ika got off the phone as she looked to Asia. Okay bad news Kaneko and Caddis are out, but seems Citri isn't having as much luck as us either. Ika said as she pulled out a bottle as they were in their school uniform. Now luckily for you thanks to Nathan I have here a bottle filled with a special attracting scent that will draw our hellhound right to us, as this is a bottle filled with the scent of a bitch in heat. Ika said as Asia had a bad feeling about this. Um don't you think that will also attract other dogs in the area? Asia asked as that made her worried. Oh don't worry as long as we don't spill it on ourselves we should be good. Ika said as Asia was nervous about this scheme. But why does hearing that from you make me even more nervous? Asia asked as Ika smirked. Because you don't know me that well yet. Ika said as she went for the jar. Now then open sesame. Ika said as she twisted the top and opened it releasing the scent as the two began to walk. That was a big mistake as when they did it wasn't even a full five minutes till they had every dog in the area on them panting looking for the scent they smelled. Oddly enough even the Cerberus trio were there as even though they were devils, they were still canine like devils. Oh crap Ika said as Asia was didn't see the hellhound anywhere. Soon the hellhound came from behind Ika and ran through her legs knocking her down as the jar's content spilled on her as she was now covered in it. Ika looked at herself as was wide-eyed at this as she had to run for it now. Oh no. Ika said as Asia already ran away as she had already seen to dogs mate in her hometown to know where this was going. Asia you traitor. Ika called as Ika tried to escape as it wasn't long till she was pounced as she screamed but was fortunate her panties were on. With Mireyama and Kiba. Mireyama and Kiba were sitting on the bench as they stood right in front of a pizza parlor, as it was the one Issei usually ordered from as Kiba was confused. Um Mireyama why are we here? Kiba asked as Mireyama smirked. Just wait a minute I have a bit of a hunch. Mireyama said as they waited. It wasn't long till the hellhound appeared as Kiba caught sight of a bag on its bag, as it looked like one a person would put a pizza in for delivery, while keeping said bag warm. As the hellhound walked in Kiba was ready to jump in, but heard no screaming of panic. In fact Kiba focused his hearing as he could hear what was going on a bit. Hey boss that creepy dog is here again. Is the pickup ready? And employee called as said boss laughed hearty like. Don't worry here it is a large pizza with everything but pineapples and olives, and a large six cheese pizza with bacon, sausage, ham, and no olives with a two liter drink. The boss said as both Kiba and Murayama heard the bag open a bit and closed once more as they soon heard the cash register go off from a successful sale. Okay you loyal little dog make sure your owner gets the pizza soon. The pizza shop owner said as it may mean the hellhound was off goofing around while doing some call Kiba crazy errands. The hellhound then left with a bag in its mouth no doubt with a drink and picked up speed a bit as Kiba was shocked. So that's your plan tail the hellhound until we can see where it's going and snag it there. 
Kiba said as Mureyama smiled. Of course. Mureyama said as they soon ran to find Sona and Saji hanging upside down by Saji's sacred gear, and Sona's attempted a trap. Let me guess Hellhound outsmarted you? Mureyama asked as the two nodded. Don't worry three of my broodmates and one of Rhea's peerage members also got outsmarted so Saya. Mureyama said before she and Kiba ran off as Saji sent curses at them for leaving them hanging there literally. With Rias and Akeno, Rias and Akeno were able to track this hellhound to what looked like an ice cream parlor as they got a text from Mureyama and Kiba about their shared quarry. They saw the hellhound enter the shop as they looked through the window as the owner saw the hellhound and sighed before it went over to a fridge and pulled out a strawberry sundae before placing said sundae in a special container so in case the hellhound ran into trouble, it wouldn't be damaged as once it was inside the man gave the container to the waiting hellhound who bit down on the container by its trap after dropping the money onto the counter. Rias and Akeno quickly hid as the hellhound exited the parlor as Rias and Akeno was shocked. Is that dog running errands? Akeno asked as even she was shocked. Whoever trained it to do this, the guy is probably a fucking genius or someone who instills that kind of weller and loyalty. Ria said as she was surprised by all of this. Then let's follow it. Came Mureyama's voice as she and Kiba passed by them. Right. Ria's called as she and Akeno gave chase as well. Later that afternoon, the brood and peerage were wide-eyed as Aika had caught up after Asia came back for her, while Caddis and Kaneko were covered in dirt. Mureyama and Caddis weren't really shocked as Rias was especially shocked and quite frankly a bit pissed off with the three senior brood members. If that hound is a says I'm shooting him in the head with my destruction power added. Rias said as clearly she was very unhappy. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Asia said as she knew a say must have some reason for not telling them about the hell hound. Just hurry those dogs are lucky Asia came back for me with help. Aika said as she was grateful for getting the scent washed in about five tubs of water. The group entered their second clubhouse and found Issei had taken the pizza boxes and Sunday from the hellhound as the dog was licking his face as Issei laughed. Oh good boy, good boy you never fail to do errands and deliver messages and the fact you hunt strays with me, you are a Nephilim's best friend Hades. Issei said as everyone was wide-eyed as Rias was pulling out Elven Knight while her eyes glowed red clearly pissed off. Asia, Mureyama, and Caddis were trying to defuse the situation as Rias, Aika, and Kaneko looked ready to murder Issei last Nephilim be damned. Okay ladies just get it out of the way. Issei said as soon he received a very powerful punch to the face and the gut before it was topped off with a shot to the head, which Issei was knocked to his desk hard. Okay I might feel that in the morning. Issei said as he got up and took the bullet out of his head as the injury heal instantly. Thank you healing factor for being the thing that saves his life and makes him reckless as hell. Any particular reason why you never mentioned your familiar was a hellhound. Rias yelled as she and her peerage had spent the entire day hunting a hellhound that was basically a says to begin with. You guys never ask for starters, second he never I only recently heard about your competition to the familiar forest, and three is about to walk in. Issei said, and on cue the Citri peerage ran in looking at the group as Issei was petting his hellhound once more as Hades licked his master back. Wait that hellhound was yours, Sona called out as she and her peerage looked like they had better days. Yeah and next time you guys want to use Hades here for a contest, let me know okay. Issei said as Sona was shocked at this. Though since Rias and her group technically caught Hades by that logic they win your contest am I right? Issei asked as that surprised Sona. Wait you're the son of Sparta correct? Sona asked as Issei smirked as Issei looked. Yeah I suppose I am what want to bring me to Inferno to claim my fortune. Issei asked as he looked to Sona. Oh Lord Sparta I understand that you are also Nephilim whose mother was the head of House Eva as well correct? Sona said as she knew Issei as Sparta's son was very much a noble of the highest caliber in Inferno. Yeah just get to the point. Issei said as Sona looked. Well I will inform you now that there will be those in both Inferno and Paradiso who will question which side you will take in the event the ceasefire ever comes to an end. Sona said as Issei chuckled. Yeah I won't take any sides, but I won't let that war go off either, don't care if I'm on my own, but you guys already fucked up the trinity with the last war, another one would screw us over and fuck us up beyond all recognition. Issei said as Sona nodded in defeat knowing how Inferno's own stubbornness caused so much harm. Yes well Rias and her peerage as well as your brood have won this contest, I suppose Saji here will have to wait a month for his familiar. Sona said as Issei snickered at Saji. Yeah tough luck oh and next time you try and think of flirting with Asia, I'll shoot your crotch. Issei warned as Saji was wide-eyed as he covered his junk in fear. So see you all later and Sona. Issei began as Sona looked. Don't worry about the Phoenix family they should be more scared of me since according to historical text, their precious immortal flame was no match for the wrath of a Nephilim. 
Issei warned Asona got the just of it if Riser tries to one-up Issei's position as the head of the Sparta family and the head of the Eva family, as well as Rhea's Grimmery's master, he would bring the full force of two households onto the Phoenix family from Paradiso and Inferno, and one word from Rhea's now due to her service under both houses, as well as the new Nephilim house, they may very well bring the Grimmery down upon the Phoenix as well as Serzich Lucifer, since the Grimmery's were known supporters and allies of House Sparta. Well then people get cleaned up because honestly you four reek. Issei said pointing to Asia, Kaneko, Aika, and Cadis. Shut up Issei. Cadis growled as Asia blushed. As of late Asia had been staying over at Issei's home as she had to deal with the oddest of beings who come into the Haidu household looking for sanctuary. It really surprised Asia at times when she saw fallen angels and a few devils enter the place and never come out from a random hall. Though Asia knew Issei and his mother were good people since Neven and Cerberus always visited as well as Maria and a few other old friends of Issei's birth parents. Anyway we better get ready for our trip there it's a full moon tonight, and if I'm right, not only will the familiar master aka Pokemon fetish ripoff be there, but also a close friend of my old man. Issei said as he got up. Um who? Rias asked as Issei smirked. But I'm a butterfly. Issei said simply as Rias was shocked as she didn't hear Asia asking why they had to go tonight and not some other night. Rias knew and had heard of Madama Butterfly, but it was assumed she had died during the Great War. Serzich's queen and wife Grafea claimed she was there when Madama Butterfly the head of House Butterfly was struck down, ending her household's bloodline. During the dawning years of the evil P system Madama Butterfly was Sparta's queen and at the time was known as the strongest queen, to the point she was the queen of queens. Rias had heard Grafea had trained under Madama Butterfly, so to think that she was still alive and kicking would mean Grafea isn't the strongest queen at the moment. Plus if she truly was the same Madama Butterfly then she is the head of the House Butterfly of the 72 Pillars, and no doubt any queen like Akeno and possibly a Dark Slayer like Rias can learn a whole lot of things from such a well-known, experienced veteran like Madama Butterfly. Well then Rias if you're done daydreaming get ready for tonight we have to get you ladies some familiars. Issei said as this might become a bit difficult if Miss Dunn. Scene break that night hide you household. The brood and peerage were gathered as Issei saw everyone was present as Asia was nervous. Issei had them come over so they can have dinner some drinks and head out on full stomachs, plus Issei wanted to have a little fun with Akeno, Kiba, and Kaneko, and well they'll find out once they port with Rias. As everyone finished their meals Hades was there eating his own food which looked to be stray devil meat, as the hellhound at the food bones, and all as it appeared the bones were good for his teeth. Now that we've eaten mind opening us the path, Rias, we don't have all night you know. Issei said as he got his gear ready. Be yeah, sure. Rhea said as she shouldn't be surprised really now that she had all day to think about it. Issei was Sparta's son and no doubt had to learn how to fight from somewhere. Rhea's then opened the portal as the brood and peerage stood on it as Hades went to his doghouse to rest after such a long trip, as the message stated, Irina wasn't going to be able to send messages for a while, so Hades would be needed there for now, and if she has a message she would send her own familiar. Okay then here we go. Issei called as Ika smiled. Alright let's go. Aika called as she was happy to be seeing some action and get her familiar. Hey don't burn yourself out. Issei said as he and Rhea stood side by side as the ported. Scene break familiar forest. The group appeared in a magical symbol as the devils of the group held back some vomit as since Rhea's was using the Nephilim teleportation she had to utilize some of her new angelic magic and looks like it gave Kaneko, Akeno, and Kiba some case of nausea. Walk it off you three can't have you three me lightweights. Issei said as he saw Akeno take it better than the other two, which was odd in his opinion. Fuck you. Kaneko said as she hissed as Issei who waved her off walked forward looking around a bit. Hey Madama Butterfly you out here, you said you would meet us here. Issei called as he looked for Madama Butterfly who did not reply. Come on auntie you're really going to leave your favorite nephew hanging, maybe I should call up Neven, I'm sure she can give a more informative help with finding a familiar for my new brood members. Issei called knowing of his surrogate aunt's little rivalry with Neven. It was soon that a flurry of butterflies appeared as everyone freaked out, but Issei, Cadis, and Mureyama were calm about it, as Rhea saw this before the butterflies gathered and formed a woman with long black hair, red eyes with red lipstick, pale skin, butterfly-designed earrings, and her dress was a flowing black dress with black silk gloves and even black heels, as she smiled at Issei. It's been too long Issei-sama. The woman said as Issei smiled. Madama it's been a while. Issei said as Rhea's was surprised as she saw the toji was missing. Hey where's the familiar master? Rias asked as Madama smiled. Last time Issei Sama was here I had to restrain him from killing Pokemon Trainer knockoff. Madama said before she sighed. So I had no other choice but to send him to an early trip as I cover this full moon tonight, now let me get a good look at you three. Madama said as she looked at Rias, Akeno, and Aika as Madama chuckled. Oh my, that girl with the glasses she's the unified dragon emperor or in this case unified dragon empress. 
Give her some time Issei Sama and she may be able to give you a run for your money. Madama said as Aika smiled. Hopefully he'll give me a run for my money in the sack. Aika said as Issei laughed at this. Madama then turned to Asia and smiled at her already seeing something she likes. A deep pure kindness to aid friends and enemies such an innocent soul with a kindness to aid all. It's no wonder that devil bound himself to you as your devil weapon. Madama said as Asia blushed at this. Um thank you Madama. Asia said showing her appreciation for the praise. Madama then went to Ria's and looked deep into her as Ria's felt uncomfortable as Madama then laughed. It seems you may have been born as the wrong race, something in you just screams to me that you were always meant to be a Nephilim and now it has happened but the person you were raised as still believed herself a devil. Madama Butterfly said as she smiled. But all in all good choices in recruits Issei Sama no doubt with time and effort, you will become a powerful Nephilim, even more so than your parents Sparta Sama and Eva Sama. Madama Butterfly said as Issei nodded. That's the plan. Issei said as Madama nodded before smirking. By the way I expect you girls to make Sparta Sama and Eva Sama grandparents and me a grand aunt before the year's end. Madama Butterfly said causing the three new Nephilim girls to nearly face fault as Issei smirked. Don't mind her she did that to Mureyama and Caddis when they first joined. Issei's aid as the two pulled in. It's true. Mureyama said as Caddis nodded before pulling out into the group. Now then let's start finding you three some familiars and to start off we'll go for a Nephilim classic a dragon. Madama said as Ria's and her peerage were surprised as Madama Butterfly went for the big guns right off the bat. Wait, why is a dragon a Nephilim classic for a familiar? Kiba asked as he was worried about that. In ancient times the Nephilim and dragons were close allies and the best of friends for their powers were equal to each other. According to historical text many young Nephilim travel to the Dragon Mountains to undergo rigorous training to be on par with the other factions. Even then the dragons saw the power of the Nephilim and even gave them some of their power to create the brood shards, it would be no surprise if you three can make a full-grown dragon you're familiar. Madama said as Rias was shocked as was Asia and Aika. They never knew they were reincarnated to a faction that had earned the dragons respect and loyalty. Yeah though it's hard to come by those guys a lot here. Issei said as they walked through the forest. Though I'm happy with what I got for now. Issei said referring to Hades as he walked through the forest. Of course Issei Sama though personally I'd avoid the water sprites the buff and ugly male like ones are the ones that normally appear before strong individuals. Madama said as she led the group through the forest. Don't have to tell me twice. Issei said as he had a bad experience with that steroid addict sprite. Long story short Issei avoided that place at all costs, unless he was sure an actual babe would pop out. Well then come along. Madama said as Akeno and Rias were close to squealing at the fact of being in the presence of such a well-known devil who served as Sparta's queen. As they walked Issei yawned a bit as they disregarded the spring, mainly because Issei still had nightmares from that man-woman water sprite. Of course when he brought Arena here for her familiar she got lucky with the sexy hot one with see-through cloths. Seriously why does he get the shit luck, well his own brood gets better luck than him. As they walked Issei looked around wondering where the good familiars were as he wanted his brood to have the best they can get their hands on, so people know not to mess with them. Wait a minute Issei began as he realized something. His pervert lady's man senses were tingling as he looked around as this place looked oddly familiar. Hey look over there. King Caddis as Issei looked and saw where she was pointing and saw a small blue dragon as Issei knew its breed. No way is that a blue dragon sprite. Akeno asked as she saw it. Sure looks like it to me Akeno. Issei said with a smirk as he saw it. Oh it's so adorable. Asia said as Madama smirked. Of course but if you want it as you're familiar then the time is now once it gets bigger, it becomes impossible to tame for anyone other than a Nephilim. Madama said as she smiled. Be careful though you three when it's angry they shoot blue lightning so approach with caution. She said as the head of the butterfly family was very cautious about this creature. This is my first time seeing such a creature though they are really rare. Ria said as Caddis then turned to Ika. But Ika, since you are not officially the unified dragon empress, it's only fair you get a dragon. Caddis said as Ika smiled at this. Issei looked around some more as he swore he had been in this area before, but just couldn't remember where exactly. Okay then blue I choose you. Ika called before a gasp was heard as Issei was wide-eyed. Okay it's coming back to me. Issei said as he knew this place was the home to some familiar. Slimy you're back. Issei called with joy as to the period shock slime was falling down upon Rias, Asia, Akeno, and Kaneko, with the added of Ika and the two veteran brood members. Um Issei that isn't slimy. Madama said as she looked at the pink slime that was landing on the girls. Oh my. Rias said as she saw the slime land on her body while Akeno seemed to be happy about this. But the, why is a pink slime here? Kiba asked as he slashed around, but oddly enough the pink slime landed on his face before surrounding it as if trying to keep him from interfering. It's burning my cloths. How naughty. 
Akeno teased as the pink slime seemed to not like being called in, hit by Akeno before it began to move around her body before it went to her crotch area, causing Akeno to gasp as the burning feeling was hitting her crotch area. This thing is making me all slimy and wet. Akeno gasped as her clothing was being burnt off. The slime responded again as Akeno called it in a thing which clearly it must identify itself as a gender, as it then spread to Akeno's breasts before burning them at point blank, as Akeno gasped loudly as the slime was molesting her, specifically like she had pissed it off. Fuck why do I have to put up with this again, Mire Amarard as she tried to get the slime off of her. You're telling me. Kata said as she forced the slime off her body. Oh no. Ria's called out as she was being stripped of her cloths as the slime burned it off. My skirt. Asia called as she tried to cover herself out. My, it seems the slime like to burn other people's clothing and other useless slime if you ask me. Madama said as the slime seemed to have heard this before charging at Madama at full force, leaving the girls barely in their underwear as it appeared it was easily offended as it charged at Madama Butterfly. Madama smirked as she was about to summon her magic seal, but the slime then spread out and avoided it as it went after Madama, who then sprouted butterfly wings and avoided the attack. I am not useless. The slime roared as everyone was shocked as by the sound of it the slime was a she. Wait what Rias asked as her she tried to cover herself up, but luckily her hair from her Nephilim power spread across her body, giving her that dominatrix-like suit once more. The slime then began to form to a young girl with crosses in her eyes, pink hair of slime that covered her breasts, practically see-through cloths as he glared at them, while her head had bunny ears on them. Think Malona from Queen's Blade, I am not like the others. She yelled as Akeno and Kaneko were wide-eyed as they stopped trying to cover themselves in shock. Oh dear it seems we have a smarter slime girl, well then little miss do you have a name? Madama asked as ironically the slimes are normally useless, but if they gain a certain sentience, they are among the most versatile of fighters out there, since they can form their body into any shape they need. Shut up slut. The slime girl roared as she charged at Madama Butterfly with a slime made whip, as Issei stepped in and slashed through the whip with rebellion. Look lady we're sorry about offending you or whatever we didn't know you were alive. Issei said as the girl glared at Akeno as the girl was practically naked at this point before huffing in a sort of tsuna dare way. I see but you can't expect me to let her get away with calling me a mindless beast. She yelled pointing and accusing finger at Akeno. Well would Asari cut it? Akeno asked in a teasing manner as the girl glared at Akeno. Oh can she be my familiar? I know she's vermin in Inferno, but the fact she's able to kick ass and change her form like this she is perfect. Ika called as a versatile familiar for a versatile Nephilim, a match made in chaos. And why would I be your familiar? The slime girl demanded unaware she left some of her slime on Asia. Simple really if you become my familiar you'll have plenty of time to make Akeno's life miserable as payback for insulting you. Ika said as the slime girl was wide-eyed at this before she gained a sinister grin with her eyes shining in a predatory way. Well then if that's the case you got yourself a protein assassin. The girl said with a smile as she was going to make Akeno's life a living hell or in this case a living limbo. It was soon Asia yelled as Issei looked and saw Asia still had slime on her, as the slime girl was shocked. Oh I forgot about her. She said before the slime girl yelped in pain as her slime bits were destroyed by a blue thunder, as they all looked and saw the dragon sprite fly down and destroy the slime bits. You little pest. The slime girl yelled as that hurt very much. Easy there we can't go ape shit for no reason here. Issei said as he saw the familiar fly to Asia and snuggle up to her. Well sprite dragons only attack if their loved ones are in danger, and if he did that those two are meant to be. Madama said as she looked to the two. Madama then took out a pocket watch of sorts and sighed to that. I'm afraid we are out of time for now everyone sorry Arias, but we couldn't get you a familiar so for now Asia, Ika let's go get you contracted to your new familiars. Madama said as Rias looked to her. Wait Madama why did you fake your death? Rias asked as Madama sighed. Sparta-sama ask each of us to so the factions won't hunt us down and we can protect Issei-sama and Kisk-sama better. Madama said as she then looked to Rias. But don't worry we'll be able to meet and I will be the one to personally train you on how to fight with some help from the Queen of Eva's brave saints. Madama said as Rias smiled and nodded to that. Alright thank you. Rias said as she heard that if one has earned apprenticeship under someone like Madama Butterfly, they are on their way to being the strongest of their style. Seen break after they bound the two beings as familiars, the group had arrived back at the den, as Issei stretched a bit no doubt a bit tired after such a long day that he had no part of as he looked around. Okay then ladies time to head home, Mureyama Caddis don't know whose house you're staying in tonight, but just be sure to give me a heads up before you arrive, since Asia is currently living with me and all that. Issei said as he stretched a bit. Got it boss. Caddis said as he then looked to Ika. Aika will get to a hunt pretty soon, but for now just go home rest and try and summon your sacred gear at will. Issei said as Aika nodded. Got it. Aika said, but Issei continued. 
Oh and I asked Neven to correspond with you for now she's taking quiet the liking to you, so if you need her meet her at her club in Red Light Cow City okay. Issei said as Ika nodded. Well Jana. Issei said as he then began walking home as he on no doubt a bit tired himself. Well he's pretty laid back. Okeno said as Ria's nodded. Yeah I suppose he is. Ria said as she smiled a bit. But hopefully he can be my saving grace. Ria said as Ria's new Issei must know Phineas the devil who has been holding the seat for House Sparta till the proper heir shows himself and reclaims his family's vast fortune and with it the considerable power it held. And seeing as Ria's was a reborn Nephilim under the service of Issei and both House Sparta and House, Eva Issei no doubt had multiple counters for practically every argument Riser has to shoot and unless he wants to start a major fight, he has no hopes of winning, then they were pretty much in the clear. Let's head home then Akeno we are running out of time after all. Ria said as she walked away as she then hissed in pain for a bit as she grabbed her left eye as it seemed to give off an ever faint red glow. Are you okay but you? Akeno asked as she looked to Ria's. Yeah something may have flown into my eye was all. Ria said as she moved her hand as the pain stopped. Oh okay then best we head home then. Akeno said as Ria's nodded before the two left. Meanwhile, with Rodin and Sir Bayonetta Ost Gates of Hell, Rodin was serving a glass of wine as he made himself a martini as his current guest looked to him. So everything going as you predicted Phineas? Rodin asked as he had his martini. Of course Rodin, I have already moved to having Issei take half of his family's fortune down in Inferno and had contacted Michael and Gabriel in Paradiso to give Issei his half of Eva's fortune as well once they meet him. The other half of both shall be given to Kisk once he makes himself known. Phineas said as he drank his wine. So he really is here in Cow City huh? Rodin said as Phineas nodded. Yes for now we will need to get some of them a form of contact here in chaos in the event that a stray pops out outside their range of their contracts. Phineas said as Rodin nodded. Don't worry already have one for our little grimmery Nephilim, his name is Enzo owes me a shit ton of money, so he shouldn't be hard to convince. Rodin said as Phineas understood. I myself had located another by the name of Norman an American looking to moving to Japan, he shouldn't be hard to convince as well, since this would allow him more access to money to allow him to travel more often. Phineas said as Rodin nodded. Well then to the future Nephilim faction. Rodin said as the two toasted before taking a shot of alcohol. End of the here. So that's it for today's video guys, before you go just like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.